Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba'd ahbata fillah I thought it was important to address the issue as some of our brothers claim and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us in them and guide us in them and bless us all with ilm al nafi rizqan tayyib wa amal muttaqabbil and some of the people are inflicted or affected by a disease with regards to the scholars and they make claims and say that 99% of the deen is understood or can easily be understood and we only need maybe 1% to go back to the scholars if we don't have knowledge about those issues. So it is if to say that everyone can be of the Mufassirin and as if everyone can be of the Muhaddithin and as if everyone can be of the Fuqaha those people who understand the fiqh in the religion and those people who have ilm and wisdom and hikmah and have devoted their whole lives to studying Kitab Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with the understanding of the Salaf of this Ummah as if anyone can just pick up the Quran and the Sunnah and have the same type of understanding or have what is sufficient for them to avoid the hellfire and go to paradise but this is a mistake ahabatifillah and this does not come from being excessive in our reverence for the scholars but yes we revere the scholars in a manner that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in accordance with Kitab Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Imam al-Nawawi rahimahullah ta'ala he said Bab fadl al-ilm ta'allaman wa ta'leeman lillahi ta'ala He said the chapter, the virtues of knowledge which is learnt and taught for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala So the Ahimmat uh, al-Din, the Imams of this religion they realize the importance of knowledge and the importance of the people of knowledge because not everyone is a doctor even if they read books about being a doctor and not everyone is a lawyer even if they have some background in law and not everyone is a political scientist even if they read the newspaper and keep up with the policy journals and likewise not everyone can be a scholar and have the fadl of the ulama Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says في كتاب الكريم وقول ربي زدني علما الله سبحانه وتعالى let us know a beautiful dua and Allah said my Lord increase me in knowledge so knowledge is مرغوب knowledge is something we should want and Allah سبحانه وتعالى says في كتاب الكريم قول هل يستوي الذين يعلمون والذين لا يعلمون Allah سبحانه وتعالى says are those who know equal to those who know not, so no, we're not equal to scholars. And yes, the scholars have levels above us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi kitab al-kareem, Yurfa'i Allah, Yurfa'i Allah al amanu minkum, Walladheena utu al-ilma darajat. Walladheena utu al-ilma darajat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi kitab al-kareem, Allah will exalt in degree those who believe and those who have been granted knowledge the scholars have a level above us they have been granted knowledge so we're not the same yes they are deserving of reverence not worship not blind following but seeking knowledge from them benefiting from them and their opinions and their views that are based on kitab Allah wa sunnah to rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the methodology of the salaf of this ummah the Sahaba being the first of them, radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een, is mu'tabar. It is to be considered and followed, and it is the way. And yes, the scholars are a type of evidence, as the ijma is a type of dalil. When there's consensus on a, uh, an evidence for you to come 1400 years later and to say, well, you know, I have a unique view. No, you know, I can use my intellect. This is battle. And even some of the ulama yahkum ala men yakul bihada bi kufr. Some of them they say, some of the ulama say that those who go against the ijma, the ijma that's proven, that it's ijma on an issue, then those people who go against it have disbelieved. So this shows us na'am, the ulama, they are given 
uh, a blessed status in Islam and never forget that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fi kitab al kareem Allah, if you believe in Allah, if you believe in the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then you'll heed this. Qal Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fi kitab al kareem Innama yakhsha, yakhsha Allah min ibadi al ulama. Verily, those who have been given knowledge amongst his slaves are, are the ones who truly fear Allah, are the ones who fear Allah. It is only those who have knowledge amongst his slaves that fear Allah. So it's with Elm. Imam, uh, Imam Bukhari, rahimahullah ta'ala, he entitled a chapter called Bab al Elm, Qabla al Qawli wal Amal. The chapter, Knowledge Precedes Statements and Actions. Why did Imam Bukhari say this? Because knowledge, Elm, you need Elm to know who Allah is. You need Elm to know who the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was. You need Elm to know what the ahkam of the religion is. And this does not come just from reading books. So this is false in battle that someone would say something and make such a claim. Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala anhu sqal qala rasulullahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam man yuridallahu bihi khayran yafiquhu fi deen Whenever Allah wants good for a person, He gives him fiqh fi deen. He gives him understanding of the religion. And the ulama, yes the ulama, they deduce from this hadith. They say that the one who is not given fiqh fi deen, this is evidence that Allah doesn't love them. So it's evidence that Allah loves a person because the Prophet ﷺ said, May you know the law will be khayran if deen. Whenever Allah wants good for a person, He gives them understanding of the religion. The one who Allah doesn't want good for is not given understanding of the religion. And may Allah bless us to be of those who gain understanding of His deen. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Wa ani ibn Mas'ud radiyallahu ta'ala anhu qal, qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, la hasid illa fi ithnatayn. رَجْلٌ أَتَاهُ اللَّهُ مَالًا فَصَلَّتُهُ عَلَى هَلَكَتِهِ فِي الْحَقِّ وَرَجْلٌ أَتَاهُ اللَّهُ الْحِكْمَةَ فَهُوَ يَقْدِي بِهَا وَيُعَلِّمُهَا مُتَفَكُونَ عَلَيْهِ In this hadith in Bukhari and Muslim, the hadith of Abdullah bin Mas'ud رضي الله تعالى عنه who reported the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said, Envy is permitted only in two cases, a man whom Allah gives uh, wealth and he disposes it rightfully. And a man to whom Allah gives knowledge, who applies it and teaches it. Fadl al-ulama. And this is why Imam, uh, Imam Nawawi put this hadith in the chapter of the, talking about the benefits of knowledge and the ulama. The ulama, they have fadl. Allah says that he's given uh, the people of knowledge darajat. He's given them status above us. We're not the same. And in another hadith, the hadith of Sahla bin Sa'ad radiallahu ta'ala anhu, and the Nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqal, li Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu, for wallahi liyan yahdi allahu bika rajalin wahidin, khayran laka min humr al na'am. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the hadith of Sahla bin Sa'ad, Radiallahu ta'ala anhu, who reported that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu ta'ala anhu, by Allah, the Prophet sallallahu swore by Allah, he said, by Allah, if a single person is guided by Allah through you, it will be better for you than a whole lot of, than, than the red camels. And the red camels were considered something very, uh, a status of wealth to the Arabs, not just pre prior, but even today, especially in places where I'm living now, that to the Bedouins and those tribal people, that the camel is one of their most, uh, they love the camels. You can't even insult the camels. So it shows us what? It shows us that the fadl of knowledge. Why? Why did Imam uh, Noah, we put it in this chapter, to show us that before that guidance comes from the ilm. Guidance comes from knowledge. And the person giving guidance, or the person who shows you guidance, or the person who has the wisdom and helps you to learn more about your deen, has to have knowledge. It's not based on just reading books, not just on them reading the Quran and just reading the Sunnah and coming up with their own ahkam, abidin. So this is another uh, hole in the argument of those who belittle the scholars. In fact, wa'iyadin billah min hadal batil.
when Abdullah bin Amr bin As radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma and the Nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqal baladu anni wulau aya the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the hadith of Amr bin As radiyallahu ta'ala an he said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said baladu anni <coughs> baladu anni wulau aya speak uh, convey from me even if it was a verse letting us know the importance of knowledge. And this is not an affirmation of the Dawah of Jamaat Tablik. No. Because they use this as a Hujja to just learn a little and just give lots of Dawah. But rather, this is n that's a new understanding of this Hadith. And so, the if we go back to the classical understanding, all throughout the history of Islam, you'll find that even the people of innovation in the past held that you must have knowledge. You must have knowledge before you give dawah. And so it lets us know the fadl of who? The benefit of who? The benefit of Ahla Ilm, the ulama. And in another hadith, a hadith of Abi Huraira, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, and the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqal, وَمَنْ سَلَقَ تَرِيكًا يَلْتَلْمِسُهُ بِهِ عَلْمًا سَحَلَ اللَّهُ لَهُ تَرِيكًا لَلَّجَنَّةً Whoever traverses the path of knowledge, Allah will make easy for him Jannah. Is Jannah easy to get to? Of course not. It's surrounded by, those, by difficult things, by striving and struggling. And what is the path? The Prophet wasallam said, Allah will make easy the one who traverses the path of Talib al-Ilm, Jannah. Why? Because it's difficult. Can everyone just pick up this book, this in English, translated in English, and make rulings? Of course not. Can everyone take a translation of the Quran and just make rulings? No. And likewise, even if they know the Arabic language, no. They do not have the ability to be of the Mufassireen and make tafsir of the Qur'an and make tafsir of the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. Islam is much more valuable than that. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has praised the people of knowledge for those reasons. So don't ever belittle the scholars. Don't ever think that they should not be revered and not be loved, but not worshipped. Not praised for anything they don't have. But we love them for their ilm and their fadl, for their knowledge and their practice of the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. This is why we love them. And may Allah have mercy upon our ulama that are living and bless them. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy upon all the ulama throughout, the, throughout times who have served the deen and served the sunnah and pre preserved the sunnah. Because the first of the ulama were who? After the Prophet ﷺ, it was the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'in. Where do you think we get most of our tafsir, most of the uh, most meaningful tafsir? It comes from who? It comes from the tabi'in, who are ulama. It comes from those, what they got from the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'in. This is how, how do we know the asbab and nuzul, the whole science? Could we have just come up with that ourselves? No, it's from the ulama. Who? The ulama of the salaf. Who are they? The sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'in who were there when revelation was being revealed. Fadl al-ulama. The importance of the ulama. So don't ever speak ignorant and foolish about the ulama. And as a last hadith, and there's so many countless verses and so many countless ahadith to show us. But let's just end with this one last statement of the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam. قال سمعت قال أبو هريرة رضي الله تعالى عنه قال سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول الدنيا ملعونة ملعونة ما فيها إلا ذكر الله تعالى وما ولاه وعالما أو متعلما رواه ترمذي وقال حديث حسن Ahabatifillah, the hadith of Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu who said, who reported the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the world with all that it contains is cursed except for the remembrance of Allah, that which pleases Allah, and the religious scholars and seekers of knowledge. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. 
So how is it? How do you stoey those who have knowledge and those who don't have knowledge? Evident. Can we say that we have knowledge when we have a little bit of Arabic and we read some of the books? No, we can't. So we can't compare ourselves, even those who have studied. I've spent at least about 15 years studying Islam, on and off, with a variety of ulama. I have nothing. I'm a tawail of al-ilm, if that, bi-idnillah. And how little do we practice of what we preach? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us and overlook our sins and bless us with al nafi and rizqan tayyib wa amalan mutaqabbilan. So how is it we can compare someone who is jahil, who would speak and slander Islam? Because when you say statements like the scholars are being revered too much, or that we can understand 99% of the Quran and the Sunnah, if we just suffice with that, this is a load of garbage. So fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jalla. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself. And the shaitan was sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sallam.